Hello everyone, I decided to make a compilation of the most insane declarations in the Watchtower's history, to my knowledge of course. I know there are some rare ones out there, but I decided to stick with some of the more popular ones. I came up with 17, but some of these I combined together, and one is a doctrine, so the doctrine won't be included in the top 10. So, things that aren't included is the fact that they wrote their own Bible, and the twisting of verses, and so on. So most, most of these declarations I either are either not biblical or so exaggerated that I decided to present them. Note that for the sake of time, the scans of many of these will be presented at the end of the video. So stay tuned if you want to check the, the scans for yourself. At number 10, we have Russell declaring that Job predicted the steam engine. In the book, The Finished Mystery, the seventh book in the series of studies in the scriptures at page 84 to 86, and that Nahum described a railway train in motion at page 93. At number nine, we have the invisible coming of Jesus and the numerous dates given to it. In 1844, a man called William Miller had predicted the visible coming of Jesus three times and of course failed. Then a man named Nelson Barber, an ex-Millerite, eventually came up with the invisible coming to cover up the failed prophecies. Russell only borrowed from Barber's fabrications. So the first date of Jesus' appearance, which was copied by Russell from Barber, was 1874. Then the judge Rutherford, the second president of the Watchtower, got a little confused. His second date for Jesus' invisible return was 1875. The very next year he printed that it was in 1878. He soon returned to Barber's original date of 1874. Finally, the third president of the Watchtower Society, Nathan Knorr, settled the matter. Jesus returned in 1914. Black people will be white in heaven. Yes, another one of Charles Taze Russell's incredible declarations. He called it restitution. Of course, they don't teach this anymore. He stated that as the leopard cannot change its spots, God only will change the black man's skin color in its own due time. And we're back with our friend Russell. And in this one, he discovered the residence of Jehovah. Yes, he lives, or used to live, in the constellation of the Pleiades. So, a spirit being, that is not part of this creation, lived in a physical location. Today, most Jehovah's Witnesses know nothing about this statement. In 1950, the Watchtower published their own New Testament called the New World Translation. Then they printed a complete Bible in 1961. Let's face it, it was a modified version adapted to support their strange doctrines. All scholars denounced it, so they had to find a solution for this problem. They managed to find a few liberal scholars to support some of their views, and one of them was a man by the name of Johannes Grieber. He was a spiritist that the Watchtower had denounced twice in the 1950s as being influenced by demons. But since they were in a difficult spot, in the 1960s they decided to use him as support for their New World Translation until they were exposed in 1980. If they need a spiritist led by demons for approval of their Bible, we can truly understand a saying of their founder, a truth presented by Satan himself is just as true as a truth stated by God. And if we consider that the New World Translation declares at John 8.44, and he, the devil, did not stand fast in the truth, because truth is not in him. When he speaks the lie, he speaks according to his own disposition, because he is a liar and the father of lies. Dear Pastor Russell, you again. Ah, pyramidology. 
Russell believed that the Great Pyramid of Giza was God's stone witness to the Bible, that the measurements of its interior passageways, measured in pyramid inches, if there's such a thing, describe the events of God's message in the Gospels. He wrote about this in most of his liter literature. Most of all, the pyramid also predicted the end of the world as we know it, for 1914. Of course, when the date came, he pushed it back to 1915. The funny thing is that he also needed to change the measurements of the pyramid passageways to fit the new date. During the reign of Rutherford, the second president, he also taught pyramidology. After a while, he abandoned the teaching and said that it was of Satan. In other words, without realizing it, he was saying that Russell was led of Satan. Imagine you're the leader of a cult and you declare that Satan was guiding your founder. Beginning in 1942, the Watchtower began declaring that those who witnessed the signs of the War of 1914 would not pass away before witnessing Armageddon. This was called the Last Generation. As the years passed, the organization appeared nervous and pressed on with its message of impending doom. As the generation was getting older, they stated you had to be at least 15 years of age in 1914 to have a significant memory of the events. Then you needed to be at least 10. Then they stated you had to be born in 1914. They even went so far as to prophesy in Jehovah's name. After stretching the generation to 81 years, they eventually changed the doctrine. Finally, after two changes to this doctrine, they changed it once more in 2010 to signify an overlap of anointed generations. If you don't understand this, it's okay. This means you're normal. At number three, we have the treasured jewel of Joseph Judge Rutherford, Bet Sarim. In 1929, the Watchtower had a huge mansion built in San Diego, California, and dedicated it to the resurrection of those whom Rutherford called the princes, that is, the Old Testament heroes of the Jewish faith. I suppose that after their resurrection they were supposed to fly over to San Diego or something. This mansion was highly publicized and attracted lots of negative criticism and mockery, of course as the judge who moved in during the winter months. All those who presented themselves as one of the princes were swiftly turned back. The watchtower quietly sold the property after Rutherford's death. The simple fact that the Watchtower declared that they are the prophet of God is enough to take number two. After all their failed prophecies and ridiculous declarations, let's not forget the flip-flops on doctrine and the publication of a manipulated Bible, we can only consider this with cynicism. After publishing these declarations, they later, later on published many articles denying their role as a prophet of God. The multiple declarations of the end of the world. They had six to be precise, with direct quotations in their literature. From 1914, 1915, 1918 to 20, or World War I, 1925, 1941 42, or World War II, and 1975, we have irrefutable documentation of this and multiple websites presenting this. My channel has many videos presenting these articles from my personal Watchtower collection. Most times, when a date would come and go, they blame their followers for starting the rumors. As expected, the Watchtower published numerous articles denying ever foretelling the end, but their cries were in vain. A funny thing is that when 1925 came and passed, in one article they blamed Satan. So does this mean they were led of Satan instead of Jehovah? Or is there God Satan? Please keep watching the video if you are interested in seeing the scans for this compilation. I hope you enjoyed. Don't forget to subscribe, comment, and press the thumbs up. Until next time.